Hello, founders. Welcome to the Gab Lab. This is a show that is designed to bring you financial intelligence that will blow your mind, but it will also help you build your bottom line. Today's episode is championed by our friends at Community Futures Saskatchewan, with over 13 offices across the province to help you build your business and nail your numbers. I'm your show host, Tony Woods Richardson, and today I am joined by Kersha Campbell. She's president of the Cash Lab. She is also known as the Cash Flow Maven. Welcome, Kersha. It's great to have you on the show. And thank you for having me, Tanya. And thanks for oh. all the work and futurepreneurs, community futurepreneurs are doing to support business owners, especially at this time. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I know we we actually met probably was it six months ago, maybe even longer than that. It's been a blur, but doing oh, a- I first at an event for Alberta Women's. You were Alberta Women's Entrepreneurs, you were speaking there. So we connected there, then we reconnected last year again. Yes, yes, yes the future of finance. So yeah. we've been in each other's lives for a while now. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're able to join us on the show here today. Um, If you are just tuning in, you'll be interested to know that today's show, if you haven't already guessed it, is all about cash flow. And that's what Kirsch is doing here today to help us talk about cash flow and more specifically, how you can control it through COVID. There's been a lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of ups and downs. And so, Kirsch, I was hoping that today we could break out this topic of cash flow into three three segments. I was thinking that maybe first we could take a look at really just clarifying what it is, because I I know a lot of founders out there might get confused. They might not be confused, but assumptions have gotten me in trouble before. So making sure that we understand what cash flow is. And then in the second segment, maybe we could take a look at some of the things to watch for or how to know if you're in trouble or if you're, if you're safe. And then in the third segment, we could look at potential solutions or remedies to um, creating some consistency or stability in cash flow. Does that sound okay with you? That sounds great. Yeah, that should work for us. For sure. Awesome. All right. So let's just dig right into it. So if we start looking at cash flow, I'm curious to know how you define it. How do you define cash flow? Cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. So we need oxygen as humans to survive. Your business needs cash flow. Cash flow is, uh, in a simple put way, it's just the movement of monies coming into your business, monies leaving your business. So actual cash, banknotes, coins, <laughs> whatever form you look at it at, the movement of monies coming in and monies leaving your business. If there is money, if there's more monies leaving your business than coming in, there's a problem. If there's mon- more monies coming in and less leaving, then depending on that ratio, you'll get into a little bit more than you might be okay. But simply put, just the flow of monies throughout your business, in and out, that's cash flow. Okay, flow of money in and out. Yes. And I think it's important what you, you know, you you mentioned there, just the whole concept about money, banks, bank notes, cash. I know that in the lending world, we don't consider it money accessed until it is in the bank account, right? So I can imagine there's a lot of business owners out there right now that that use um, uh, merchants, credit cards, and sometimes there's a hold on that cash as well, right? It's not always immediately right into the bank account. So into the bank account is key. Money into the bank account is key. And uh, I'll I'll elaborate on that a little bit more when cash flow is a huge topic. So yes, mm-hmm. money is coming in, but there's another layer to the definition where it's your access to money. So it might be, okay, you have access to a loan, like credit. In some worlds, depending on what's happening, that's also considered a part of your cash flow as well. Okay. Well, and so that does bring up an interesting topic because I know that uh, and yeah, th- this is going to be fascinating because it could get splintered into a number of different areas. But I know when I'm helping a client look and evaluate at the health of their business, mm-hmm. I don't always we take into account any loans or subsidies or COVID benefits that they might have received because that is access to cash. But when we're looking at the health of the operations, I usually leave that portion out because it's not indicative of the business overall uh, as to the health of the operations and the the viability of the the programs or the services. So 
I think there's there's definitely different layers and complexity to this conversation. There are, there, definitely, there are definitely different layers and complexity. And again, it's like you're, you'll be assessing a vehicle if you want to purchase that vehicle, right? There are going to be different things to use to examine, do you want this vehicle or not? So the same way, there are different sets up to examine how your business does operate, the strength of your business, the health of your business as well. So, yeah. Okay, so let's you you just touched upon health. So when we're looking at cash flow, how do you determine if a biz, business is healthy based on cash flow? What are we looking for specifically? So there there are several factors we do look at. at. One, we look at how much cash flow you have in your business in your bank account compared to your sales. That's one. And how many months of that do you have? That's another thing. We also look at liquidity. That is. If you had to pay all your short-term obligations, your short-term debts tomorrow, would you be able to do that? We, you know, there's so there are lots of different ways to examine how healthy your business is in relation to cash flow. Uh, Krisha, it's it's interesting that you're talking about liquidity right uh-huh. now because several episodes back we had uh, Neil Jones in from BDO who was talking a lot about um, liquidity ratios. And I know we're getting into measuring here, but the the two ratios that he spoke about were the current ratio, Mm -hmm. which is where we take all of our short term assets, right, and our short term liabilities. Yes. Uh And we're looking to make sure that we have enough assets to be able to cover those liabilities. But then what was interesting is he talked about the quick ratio, where we actually remove the inventory from our assets, because we might not be able to turn that into quick cash to cover off the liability. And then that gives us a better sense of our ability or to your term liquidity to manage that that short term debt that we've got on the books to, to just that, kind of keep us is, afloat. Yeah, and definitely that is correct. I usually go a step deeper with my clients though. So okay. we are looking at that. However, I also take it a step further. What is the amount of cash you have in your bank account compared to your sales? Because a hundred thousand, I'm, I'm just going to use some random figures here. A hundred thousand in the bank for a company that has, let's say, a um, million dollar in sales, that might look reasonable. But if you have 10 million in sales and all you have in your bank account is a hundred thousand, that's a red flag for me. That's a red flag because based on your operations, that 100,000 is not going to support you for the next 60 or 90 days. So I do dive mm-hmm. a bit deeper when it comes to my clients and assessing, you know, how the, their strength in regards to the cash they have in their bank account and for how long as well, because you might, you know, the, um, at, there have been situations where, oh, you have 100,000 and in the bank, you're feeling happy and comfortable. But when we dive into the forecast, the budget, we realize that, this 100,000 can only last you for a month if you don't get some other cash in. And again, that's another red flag. So again, it's diving as deep as we can into what your cash flow balance is, what it means in relation to your operation, your business overall, because each okay. business is so different. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it reminds me a little bit of, um, and I know, Cash flow is, is somewhat recognized as a different term, but what you're defining or describing right here, it reminds me a little of um, our personal emergency account or a personal savings net, right? Enough that's set aside to make sure we can weather emergencies, right? Or economic downturns. I'm going to ask you this question, but I suspect I know the answer. <laughs> and it's going to be how the, the question is how many months of capital would you recommend we have set aside so that we can take care of those operating expenses? A good mix is at least three to six months and especially to nine months. So that's a good buffer because it's not only if you have an emergency, it's your day-to-day expenses, your operations, paying your team, if you have contractors, purchasing supplies, Mm -hmm. you know, just your daily operations of the business, not even getting into you know, funding your debt and all that, if you do have debt as a part of your business structure as well. So, you know, it's getting into what are your operational needs and we'll get into it a little bit more because sometimes you can't meet your payroll. That's the issue, that's a red flag there, right? But we'll get into a little bit more yeah. talk for sure. 
But I know that is a huge issue for many business owners, especially through COVID, right? There's a lot. I know for myself personally, I was putting on payroll on credit cards, Kershia, if you can believe it, many years back, almost a decade back, that was one of my big flags. But I know we will cover off on flags here in a bit. Um, Okay, before we move on, because I'm I'm excited to move on. I think you're probably pretty excited to move on too in terms of what to look for. We're jumping into solutions, but many business owners to clarify cash flow statements as they pertain to all of our financial statements. Can you just clarify? You know, we've got the balance sheet, right? We've got our income statement, then we have cash flow. Maybe just a, a quick tutorial for those listening in on the differences between the, the three and the, I guess, again, the relevance of the cash flow statement compared to the other ones. Sure. So I like to look at the income statement or the profit and loss as like a movie. So it's like, it's showing you over the course of six months, 12 months, what has happened over the business? How many sales did you have? What were your expenses? So it's over that period of time, that is your profit and loss. So it's saying, the top level, your sales, your revenue, less your expenses, your costs. The bottom number is going to be what your profit is. And we'll take it a step further at profit after taxes as well. Then we also dive into the balance sheet. I look at that as a still picture. So at this point in time, today at let's say two o'clock, <laughs> what is your position as a business? What is it that you own? And what is it that you owe to others? So that net position will tell you, do you owe persons more than you own or vice versa? So that's the balance sheet. It's a very, very important report. It's probably, I'm not, well, it, it's very, very, very significant because it speaks to the strength of the business. We, we get a lot of figures and analysis pulling from that balance sheet. The cash flow statement what that is, it's showing you how did you spend your cash over the last 12 months, right? Did you spend this amount on, on, on um, purchasing supplies? Did you spend this amount on investing in equipment and all that? However, I'll quickly add that um, the cash flow statement that a lot of persons think about, that is not going to tell you about the future, right? So mm -hmm. that is saying... In the past, over the last 12 months, that's how we spent our cash. However, what is more important than the past, the forecast, which is what I use with my clients, looking forward for the next month or two, are we going to need cash? Are we going to be in a bank overdraft? Do we have enough monies to cover the needs of our business and so much more? So that's yes. a class. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I love that analogy to the movies. I know that I oftentimes will think of like a, a balance sheet as the net worth statement, right? I think of an income statement almost as like your, your, your tax return, like high level, like here's what you made, here's what you can, yeah. you know, here's what you spent. But your cash flow, I think you, the cash flow statement, you, you struck upon something that is, um, is, is pretty critical. There's the past, Right. And then there is the forecast. I like to think of it like a budget, like, you know, at home, exactly. you do a personal budget is a budget for your business. Yes. But you mentioned some terms and I know oftentimes founders will ask me, you know, what are the differences? So a forecast, a pro forma, um, a, a, a forecast, a pro forma projected mm -hmm. cash flow, right? Those are all future based. Yes. Future. Well, I'll quit the forecast. Usually it's a mix of what you budgeted, what you're expecting, plus the actual. So it's a, there's a little difference with the forecast. It's mixing, okay. okay, what has actually happened so far with what I'm projecting to happen. So it's a mix there with the forecast. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a mix. The forecast is a mix. Yes. Okay. Fascinating. All right. And tell me this. I have not yet, and I'm sure it's out there, but I have not yet come across software that does an intuitive job of forecasting our cash flow um, based on what we need from a net profit perspective. It's always just saying, here's historically what you looked like. Let's just add 10 or 15% onto top line sales and maybe make some adjustments on expenses. But then we end up, many businesses end up in that same problem of still just operating at a break even or a, a, a deficit position. 
Have you come uh, across any software that does a great job? I'm actually in negotiation with a partnership uh, situation now to start okay. using that with my clients, that, that software to do that. I use Excel now. That's what I used to do my cash flow forecast for my clients. But I'm working with a company now to start having it done electronically as okay. software. So it's, yeah, that, that's, that's exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. It is exciting because I think that's one of the... Um, that's one of the, the the most dangerous positions I think a lot of business owners get themselves into is just basing a plan based on what they did historically and knowing that many business owners historically weren't doing so great on a, a bottom line perspective that they it perpetuates the problem year over year. Okay, well, I think that is, uh, that's brilliant. I think we've, is there anything that we're missing from a clarifying what the cash flow is and how- I would also add that as business owners, it is important that you understand that profit is not equal to cash flow. I get that asked a lot about my from my clients. I made this profit, I don't see it in my bank account, what's wrong? And then we get into that. You know, it's fun to explain to them. So your profits are not the same as your cash flow. Profits are important. However, the ultimate measure, what you need in your business, you're going to need your cash flow, you're, you need your cash to pay your bills, to pay yourself, to purchase supplies. So because of um, how it's calculated from the accounting standards and other, you know, details behind the scenes, yes. profit is a different way of calculating, you know, the performance of your business. So profit is your sales, that's your expenses, your costs, that's your profit. Cash flow is what's actually going to be in your bank account. So because of timing differences and other estimations, other non-cash flow flows that do impact your profits, they it doesn't translate into cash. So bear that in mind. So a lot of times okay. as business owners, I see it where, okay, only looking at the top line, my revenue, I need to get that next project in that next sale. That's good. Mm -hmm. You need to take it a step further. Is it a profitable sale? That's even taking it a step further. However, will this transaction lead me to having cash in my bank account. So that's even taking it to the height of that, analy that analysis as well. So I do want to put that out there that profits are not the same as cash flow. Not okay, cash. brilliant. I think that's a great place that we can pick up too in the next segment. Like that's our perfect yeah. segue in, right? Because we do talk about impact on the bottom line. Okay, um, so thank you so much, Kirsha. That is our first part of really understanding how to better control cash flow. Firstly, getting aware of what cash flow is. Uh, please join us. We're going to take a little bit of a break, but join us back here for part two, where we start to understand the impact of cash flow on our bottom line performance. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, do I dare I say, but how to be able to, to measure it and understand if we're headed in the right direction or the wrong direction as it pertains to cash flow. So thanks for joining us. Um, as always, please feel free to download the free tools and templates and playbooks that are available with this episode. We're going to catch uh, a quick uh, uh, sip of water here, and we're going to see you back here for part two of how to control your cash flow through COVID. We'll see you here in a minute. Bye. Bye.